What is up guys, my name is Meeps and welcome back for yet another League of Legends video. So today's video is uh, something that I'm pretty excited for. Uh, this is a champion that I personally really, really like, but he's a little bit hard, not gonna lie. Um, this video was requested by our very first member on the channel, Devroxius. Thank you so very much for your membership, really appreciate it for anyone else interested you can click the join button and you can see all the perks you get from becoming a member uh but one of these things are of course priority on champion requests so this video is mostly for you and also for the rest of you guys who also requested this enlightened monk 13 hp phoenix fire cat of power emmanuel Peretta, ivan and kyle lovely today we are of course playing asir so asir is Oh my god, yeah, this champion, he's he's something very unique. He's a champion that I think a lot of people have looked at, probably been like, I really want to play this guy, but a bit, then after a while, maybe been a little, tried him once or twice, or just been like, okay, he's a little intimidating to play because he is mechanically very, very hard, at least compared to a lot of other champions. Um, personally, I would rank this guy as probably one of if not the hardest mid laner to play uh he's just he's just a really like he's a really he's a really unique and and like different champ to play and since there's not that many champs or if any that really is like similar to him then i think that's why he appears to be so hard or so difficult for a lot of people to play because they don't really have the skill set from some other champion that they can apply to this one. Um, but yeah, let's that aside, let's just shortly summarize those of you guys who are new on the channel. Um, then what we're going to do in this video is, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about who this champion is for. Uh, then we're going to talk about the abilities. When it go, we're going to break down every single spell so that you guys know exactly what every single spell can do. And then we are going to talk a little bit about the combos, how you generally want to play this guy, and uh, what he can do. And then lastly, we'll talk about uh, kind of how you like the game strategy, how you want to play this guy, uh, or yeah, yeah, basically how you want to play him in, in uh, early, mid, and late game. Um, so that's kind of the overall plan. For those of you who are new in here, you probably will notice that the gameplay is not going to be amazing. It is because I'm trying to explain this live and make it a bit more entertaining and kind of try and show you guys some of the uh some of the tools and some of the like some of the ways things work in a a a, a more yeah real fashion ish so it's a little bit of a different type of guy than a lot of people are used to so anyway if you are new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you like the videos make sure to hit that like button it really helps me out anyway to the guide um, let's start off with the uh, yeah the first agenda. Who's the who, who's this champion for? Well, personally, if I had a friend who was just starting out with League of Legends, being completely new, then this is not a champion that I would recommend for him. Uh, however, of course, if if this is just a champ that he wants to play, and it's like this is why I want to play League, then of course go for it. This guide should give you the tools you need. Uh, but he is a very hard champion to play so it's something that i would probably would not recommend unless you are either mediocre and played the game for a while got your meta game down or your macro game down and you just kind of want like a challenging and fun champion to play so that you're somewhat where in the mediocre to advanced player um anyhow let's move on to the very first spell the very first spell is of course the passive uh because that's what most people don't know and that is what is called uh, Shurima's Legacy. And Shurima's Legacy is, uh, is of course, as it's the passive, as usual, as you, wow, I think I just hit puberty right there, <laughs> as usual. Um, oh. uh, but as you guys uh, know, the passive is usually what people don't really read, or at least don't read carefully. So we'll break this one down first. Uh, this passive, all it does is very, very simple. It allows a seer to summon turrets on turrets that has been destroyed. It's kind of weird, but it's pretty cool also. Uh, so this basically means 
that whenever a seer yeah, let's get some poke in on that guy uh this basically means that yeah in late game mid game and all these things it's going to be very useful because it's going to allow you to uh to pop a turret in order to maybe stop someone from flanking you or you can use it with your ult to push somebody underneath we'll get to that for those of you who don't know how the ult works then oh yeah what well, will not be able to get this guy down i think oh he's gonna respawn rip do not have the mana for it um but then yeah basically it's gonna allow you to, uh, to use this turret for many many th things that are, are going to be very useful i think that a lot of people don't know is that this turret has some armor the armor is going to wear off as a seer moves either out of its range or if he dies meaning that if if you pop this turret and during a team fight you die then this turret is going to be become a lot weaker as as it keeps staying there after your death meaning that it's going to be less useful for your team or at least going to be weaker also, um, the cool thing with this turret is that anything that the turret kills, minions, champions, etc. Um, the gold that would come out of these things are given to a seer. So if the turret kills a player, well, guess what? A seer gets the gold. That's the cool thing about be, uh, being a, a I, I don't know what you call it. A Is he like a gar? A god thing? He's a thing. He's an emperor. I think that's emperor's. I guess that's kind of in one of the spell names. Emperor's divide. I guess he's an emperor. That's the cool thing about being an emperor. Then you get gold from your turrets, or from yeah, from the turret you spawn, not all turrets. <laughs> okay, so that's your passive super symbol. All it does. Okay, so next up we have or W. We're gonna skip over the Q for now. I really want to start off with the W. Because the thing is that if you don't understand the W, then the Q, the E, uh, and the E is not going to make that much sense. So we're going to start off with the W. So our W is called Arise. And basically, this is one of the primary spells, spells of Asir. It's the one you're always going to start with because, well, you don't really have a choice. Uh, you have to choose it. So what this thing can do is basically that it allows... A seer to spawn these soldiers as you can see here we have a soldier which is pretty cool and these soldiers work kind of as a do we need to help down here uh no he's running away i hope this guy was running gonna run back up um the thing is that these soldiers kind of work as a uh well i actually kind of lost train of thought the thing is okay let's these soldiers arise that that uh, that um, a seer can spawn. They kind of work as a seer's auto attack, meaning that if you spawn one of these soldiers, it's going to be untargetable, and it can attack anything in its circular range. You can see right here, it's its radius around here. It can hit anything in this range, which is honestly very very good. Um, so that's kind of how that one works. It, it allows a seer instead of auto attacking himself you can see if i put a, a minion down here and i want to attack this one he's going to auto attack himself but if the minion is in range of the target he's aiming at then the uh or then the soldier is going to attack instead so it's it's kind of simple we put a minion here and i attack this one a seer's going to attack but if i hit this one the soldier's going to attack because it's in range like why attack yourself when you can get your uh your soldiers to do it for you okay so that's kind of the primary thing with the soldiers the thing is that his soldiers he can spawn uh several of them he can have up to two stacks of them ready here on his bar you can see right now there's the number two down in the corner here which tells us i can spawn two uh soldiers so if i do this uh, like you can see right here now we have two sol two soldiers which is super cool the thing with a seer soldiers is that if two if one or more soldiers hit a target then any any uh, any soldier after the first one that hits is only going to deal 25 percent damage but it's still very good so don't ever underestimate having many soldiers um also a seer soldiers gives aoe damage meaning that you can see here they hit anything 
in its line if uh if they're like correctly positioned unlike what i'm doing now see we just poke this guy a little bit also i see his normal his own auto attack is actually really easy to last hit with by the way because it's super fast it's very very reactive all right so get some good but if you can see if we put a soldier out here we just need to last hit that one um then you can see it hits anything in this line as it's hitting the target which is awesome uh, but yeah, if you have more than one soldier, then any, then if it hits more than one, or if, if more than one, one, one soldier hits the same target, then the first soldier is going to deal 100% damage. Any extra soldier, any, yeah, it's going to deal 25%, but it's still really good. So if you have three, four soldiers, it's going to, yeah, you're going to deal a really good chunk of damage. All right. So that's kind of that one. It's it's fairly simple, but what you want to think about when using his his W is you want to try and position these in a in a mindful manner. And what I mean with this is that you want to try and position them such that uh, let's say in laning phase, as an example, you want to try and position them such that your enemy kind of has to uh, has to 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 get poked by your soldier in order to take his minions if you can do that you're golden like he's really gonna struggle and this is gonna work very well together with uh or q also one thing i forgot to mention about or w is that if a seer summons several uh of his uh, minions of his uh soldiers then if he has uh if he has i think it's it's three in low level and two in in uh once you reach pretty high level um then as your ga gains and it increased amount of uh of attack speed with up to 60 percent so this basically means let me just try and explain that in a, in a in a much easier way is that if a seer has if a seer has two soldiers down and he spawns a third one then Asir gets and Asir and his soldiers, for that matter, gets up to sixty percent attack speed for a brief moment, which is absolutely insane. It's really going to allow you to completely shred your targets, uh, which is really really awesome. So it's it's something you want to play around having more soldiers up, and this also plays together with having more soldiers on the same target, because that way, like if you have three soldiers hitting a target at the same time. Plus, you get the buff of 60% attack speed. Then, as you might guess, you are going to start dealing a serious amount of damage. Um, should be able to get this guy down. And there we go. Thank you. Alright, so we got that one down. That was pretty nice. Uh, sadly, we have to push down a lot of our CDs for it, but I am just trying to kind of uh, do decently and make sure that we are somewhat fit for late games such that I can show you guys some of the very cool things. But yeah, that's your W. That's all it does. It's super cool. It's really, really fun to use. Um, oh, yeah. A single thing that I actually forgot is that whenever a seer is is uh, close to a target or is, uh, is within range of an enemy uh turret then he's uh his minions actually or he's uh whoop, let's get a control ward then he's uh soldiers despawn a lot faster they're actually gonna despawn uh i think it's up to like is it 50 percent i think it's i as far as i remember yeah they, they expire twice as fast um if you're within range of an enemy turret so that's something you want to be aware of um but yeah it's a minor thing that i think most of you guys probably won't even notice but you need to know so, there it is. Alright. Our next spell is called Conquering Sands. And Conquering Sands is also a really, really... Wow, I just saw Volibear up here. Uh, Conquering Sands is also a very, very fun spell. Um, this is what's going to allow you to just poke your enemy so freaking bad in the... Uh, ooh. Can we help down here? I think we can. I think we're getting... Uh, Oh, this bat. Ooh. That was a little scary, to be honest. I'm going to go back in my lane. 
Hungering Sands is a big part of what makes a Seer so freaking good. Because it allows a Seer to gain an absurd amount of range. Because what a Seer can do is that he can push his, uh, his minions forward. Alright, I'm going to go out here. There we go. I'm not going to be able to do much about that. It allows a Seer to push his, uh, his, uh, his... Or take all of his soldiers and push them in a direction. Which is really, really cool. Or actually just tell them to go at a, into a specific location. So, this means that if, let's say we have a minion here and we have one here. Well, then if I want to attack someone up here, then I can just Q and both of them are going to land there. Um, this is super cool because it does one of two things or it does these things. First of all, uh, you are going to reposition your soldiers, which is really good because, yeah, well, then you can attack with them and then they, they deal an absurd amount of damage. Secondly, it is going to allow you to, uh, or this spell also deals damage when the your soldiers hit the target. And third, then once you hit a target or every target that these, your, your, what's it called? Your soldiers go through, they slow. So they slow with 25% stacking indefinitely. And this basically means that if, uh, let's say we have two soldiers here. And we hit up on uh, here on uh, on their wow under Anivia. Then we just slowed her by fifty percent for a brief moment. Uh, this becomes really relevant as you get into late game, having three soldiers down and stuff. It's going to be really, really insane and something you really do want to think about. Oh come on, really? Um, so do not underestimate this in any sense. Like it is absolutely insane also oh, also the repositioning of your uh your soldiers is just an absurdly good thing like it's really good and it works very well together with your e i'll show a very s cool combo of how you can use that use this to jump further with your e but first we'll just explain what your e does so yeah that's all your q does super cool you want to kind of just use this for uh for poking for repositioning your minions and for being a beast because it's it's fun it's really fun all right so uh our next spell is our e and our e is called shifting sands and shifting sands is a pretty pretty yeah simple spell what this allows you to do is it allows you to jump to one of your soldiers so like if you stand here you can jump to your soldier if you jump to a soldier, then yeah, you just kind of jump to it and that's that. But also for every target that a seer passes through, or if not for every target, for the first champion that he, he passes through, he deals damage to and he gains a shield himself. Additionally, and this is where a lot of people don't even know this, is that he also regains a stack of a rise. So you always want to make sure that you 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 have a soldier down already, because you'll get an extra one as you uh, as you do this if you jump through your target. So just summarizing the spell really quick, all it allows you to do is to jump to your soldier. It allows you to jump to your soldier. If you go through a champion, then you deal damage to it, and you gain a shield yourself. Alright, so this brings us to some of the more nifty things as soon as we've just... Uh... Oh, wow, I did this the wrong way. I'm sorry. I wanted... I should have thrown this under turret. My bad. That was terrible. Okay. I'll just explain what I needed to do here instead. Uh... I'll explain the all in just a second, but just want to clarify that this was a pretty poor play. What I did here was I popped a soldier, then I jumped to it and clicked Q at the same time, which means, or just as I reached my soldier, allowing me to push myself further forward. And where I did the mistake here was I needed to push Anivia under my turret with my ult instead of, yeah, instead of just kind of throwing her away from me, which made no sense to do. So I just want to clarify that that was just a mechanic, mechanically bad play by me. All right, so let's explain the ult. So for those of you who were a little bit confused about what happened. Uh, so our ult is called Emperor's Divide. And uh, well, yes, I feel kind of like an emperor now. 
Um, Emperor's Divide is a super fun spell. It, uh... Oh, this guy is in trouble. Ooh, that was painful. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Mm. All right. Let's back out. I'm too low. I have no HP. Maybe I should have stayed for a second. I might have been able to finish one of them off, but uh, I went back too soon and then back again. So if I had stayed from the very beginning, I might have been able to get one of them down. All right, let's get that. I think that's all good. And start running up there. So Emperor's Divide is uh, is your old. It's a very very fun spell because what this thing is, allows you to do is it allows a seer to summon this little small ar small army of uh, six <coughs> to eight of his uh, his soldiers, and uh, these soldiers then knock uh, yeah knock your target back and deals a good chunk of damage. Um, so it can hit several targets as you guys can see. It, you guys can see if we hold over it. Where you can see just how like how long it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, it creates this wall that pushes anything that it hits uh, backwards. Uh, you can put, of course, push it in a either direction. I'll, uh, I'll just. Oh wait, I need to go help Drake. Sorry. Rip. My bad. Yeah. We'll focus on winning in a moment. <laughs> Okay, so if we just take quick cast off, I'll show you guys. You can cast it in either direction. This would, if I cast it this way, it will push people backwards in that direction and vice versa. So. Nice. All right. Again, a terrible ult by me, but yeah, just kind of wanted to use it. Let's <laughs> show you guys what it did, but it went pretty terrible. Okay, so. As I said, your old it pushes people back, deals a good chunk of damage. They are airborne, so things like a C or things like Yasu old and stuff like that will work in combination with a Seer Sold, which is very nice. Um, but it pushes people back, and then the wall stays there for an additional uh, duration, which is like I think it's five seconds if I remember correctly. Uh, it stays there for five seconds, and the thing is that. Your teammates, your allies can run through the wall, but enemies cannot. Um, so this is super cool. This really allows you to, uh, yeah, to become extremely like you can you can create really you can create some really really strong and um, what do you say strategic moves and reposition the enemy team using this and really screw them over. It's really fun. It's really really good, but it's pretty hard to use correctly. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what your, what your ult does. Um, so combining these things are a little bit harder. There are different things you can do. I'll see if I can do it here. I know I'll bring some things in cooldown, but what you can do is you can have your, say you have your, your soldier here. You want to jump to it and then you want to go back and you can actually push, push your ult at the same time. So this means all the way from up here, I could have dragged all the enemy champions from up there and back. And the, the way I did this was popping your W, jumping to it, and then pushing Q to, to, to fire me backwards again. You can, of course, also do this forward. And this is the combo you really do want to learn. You want to learn this timing. In the beginning, it can feel a little, little hard. But what you want to do is that you actually want to... Oh. Oh, what? I'm dead. Rip. All right, I think for this, we're gonna go Death Cab as our next thing. Okay, so as I was saying, what you really wanna learn, honestly, you're a very, very strong combo to learn is that you want to pop your W, so your, your Arise, so you have a soldier down. Then you want to use your E to that soldier, so that you start jumping to it, and then to extend its range, so that you jump further, you click your Q as you are in mid-air. This requires a little bit of practice. It's not super hard, but using it like well during the game can be a little bit difficult, because um, it is going to 
you're, you're gonna have to stay kind of clear-headed and you might have to like get some muscle memory with it but as you guys can see you can pop your w you can click e and then q to drop oh, okay i actually missed it there and then you can click your q before you reach your thing your soldier i'll just do it again instead of screwing it up here we'll pop it here you can see we can jump to it and q and then we'll we'll get much further um, you can, of course, with your E and your W, you can jump over walls. So if you have a soldier here, you can jump over the wall. You can also use your Q to extend it over a wall. And there, basically, almost any wall, if not any wall in on the entire map, you can jump over using your, your E to a soldier and repositioning. So, yeah, that's kind of that thing. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a very, very cool spell. Um, but let's talk a little bit more like the game strategy. How you want to play this guy? Well, in the early game, then what you really want to do is you want to make sure or you want to try as much as you can to shove the lane. For those of you who not who doesn't know what shove the lane means, it just means that you want to try and push the lane uh, such that you kill the enemy minions before the enemy kills your minions. The reason for this is that you really want to try and take advantage of a serious absurdly long range. Uh, he can hit targets at very, a very, very far range. And this allows you to poke them um, with your popping your W and just auto attacking them with it. Or if they're trying to stay out of range, you can use your, your soldiers first to clear the wave and then Q uh, them into the enemy. Oh, wow. This guy's actually just going for it. This might this is not worth it but okay i'm, I'm backing out because this guy's gonna finish the game if nobody backs so all right let's try and focus a bit on trying to win the game because we've been half brain afk throughout this game and we are actually pretty in a pretty good state we are fairly fit this was a terrible play And we'll just... There we go. Thank you. Alright. Not my proudest play, but... It, it it got the work done, I guess. Okay. So, in the early game, as I said, you want to try and po uh, try and shove the lane. Poke your enemy as much as possible. Of course, kill him if you can. Um, if you feel like it's a kill... A lane that is easy to get a kill in, then go for Ignite. If you feel like, okay, this is a champ that I'm probably not going to be able to kill... Then go for for a teleport and uh, try and play the team game instead in the early game as well. Um, if you shove the lane and you get the prior on the lane, prior meaning that you can choose what's gonna happen because the other laner is gonna have to basically uh, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to clear the way first before he can do a move. Then you can also roam to either top or mid lane or help out your jungler. As a mid laner, you are very versatile uh, and you have a lot of mobility on this guy with your E combined with your Q and you have your ult to reposition people, even doing tower dives where you push people out from under their own turret and just putting them into the hands of your, your teammates. Like Asir is super strong in that fashion. He's very versatile um, and uh, there are a lot of ways of, of playing him really, really well. Um, so figure out what works for you, how you play him most stably. Personally, I like playing him with Ignite. Uh, but if I know I'm playing against something where I'm like, okay, I'm probably not going to be getting the kill. And I uh, like, then I will be going for teleport. All right. So as you go into the mid game, you of course want to try and, and, and kind of, kind of, uh, figure out what to do you. Oh, what? All right, so this might not be the perfect engage at all. Gonna pop my turret here. Gonna push this guy under our turret. I am 100% dead. Rip. All right, well played. Okay, so as you go into the mid game, then what you kind of want to try and do is you, of course, want to play around objectives. You want to make sure that you keep your farm up. Um, like, Asir is a late game champion. He's extremely strong in the late game. He does a 
an absolutely absurd amount of damage. So you you wanna you wanna try and get as much gold as possible. When you get into the mid game, then most commonly you will see the ADC and support going into your lane or into the mid lane, and this is where you wanna start looking to rotate uh, to the opposite lane of where your top laner is. If your top laner is doing things right, he's going to be rotating the furthest away from the objective and you should be able to rotate the closest to the objective. Meaning if Drake is spawning, you're right rotating bot and he's top. And if Drake is down, but Baron is up, you're rotating top and he is, uh, yeah, and he's bot lane. So I hope that kind of makes sense. But whenever you get into the late game and you are team fighting that, then what you want to keep in mind is that Asir has extremely long range so make your use of this you never want to get ripped they actually surrendered i still believe we could win this <laughs> okay i feel like it kind of showed most of it let's explain the last portion of it but the thing is with a seer in the late game then he has extremely long range so you need to make use of this in team fights you never want to go in and be the front line of course if you can make a cool play uh, that's going to surprise them. You can jump over a wall, push them all into uh, kind of a trap such that your team can just annihilate them with your, using your ult Then do that. But be very careful with your ult. Think about uh, what position you put yourself in because you on a Syrian late game deal so much damage. Yeah, like you deal a massive chunk of damage. So make sure that that if you do like a risky play where you push people out, that you're sure that your team can follow up on it, even if you get destroyed. Um, and of course, if you know that you can do this and you're safe and all that, go for it. <laughs> uh, otherwise, use the trick I showed you guys, popping a, a uh, one of your soldiers pretty deep, and maybe the enemy pushes forward, and then you can jump to your soldier and then redirect your soldier back again and push them with you, because uh, that way you can actually push them really, really far. Um, so use some of these things as tools, um, but in the late game, play as much as you can on max range. You deal so much damage. Uh, so kind of think of yourself as kind of an ADC thing. You don't want to be taking damage. You outrange just about anyone. So keep repositioning, keep trying to put your, uh, soldiers in a way that's, that optimizes your damage and use the repositioning. Uh, remember that you can always jump over walls with your E and you can get extra range using your Q. You can get an extra minion by jumping through a target. So maybe during a team fight, it's a, an advantage for you. If somebody dives to you, you jump, you put a, uh, a, a one of your soldiers on the other side of him, jump through him. It's going to give you an extra stack of a rise. Put that extra one down and kill them all into uh, into your target. Uh, that way you're going to have some extra damage to, uh, to deal. So yeah, really think about how to utilize these things. Use your your minions in the, or your soldiers in the early game to position them in ways that are going to make it harder for the enemy champion to farm without having to uh, to to take damage from one of your soldiers and then use your Q to poke them whenever you can. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the overall like how you want to play a seer. I hope this kind of gave you guys an overall idea and that this is what you guys wanted. I, I really hope you enjoyed it. I really love playing this champion. He is a ton of fun to play. So no matter what skill level you are, if you feel like this is the champ for you, of course, just go for it. Difficulty is a subjective matter. And if you're having fun, that's the most important thing. Uh, then becoming the best at it is uh, secondary. And if you're having fun, the chances are that you're gonna get good is a lot better. Um, so yeah. That's going to be it for this one. I'm very sorry that my team surrendered. And uh, yeah, that's, I guess it kind of happens. This was, as I said, no way a perfect game. Um, that's not the point of it. It's just to kind of showcase this uh, this champion and like show you guys how to play it. But I feel like it was a good game overall. I had fun and uh, I, I got to show off a lot of cool things. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then make sure to smash that like button because it really does help us. We've grown so much lately and you're, you're like every single like that you guys put on our videos is going to ensure that more people see the video, meaning that in turn, our community is going to grow a lot faster. Uh, so thank you guys so much for that. And if you are not already uh, subscribed to the channel, then uh, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> no I'm kidding, but really do it now. Um, so yeah, if you're not already subscribed, make sure to do so. 
Uh, we are growing so rapidly. It's so nice to see. Thank you, guys. It really does mean the world to me. Like, legitimately, I am speechless seeing all the support we've had lately. You guys are definitely making my dream come true. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video. As always, we're going to end the, the video in a good fashion. So stay awesome, have fun, and take it easy, guys.